watching West Harper Community Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. For the community, by the community. Love, sex, relationships. <laughs> it's getting steamy and racy on Inspire Success. Don't you touch that dial. We'll be right back. Get ready to find hope. Get ready to be inspired. Get ready to discover your full potential. Get ready for total success from the Total Success Coach, Princess Bola Adelani. This is Princess Bola Adelani, the Total Success Coach, welcoming you to Inspired Success, your monthly dose of inspiration power the program that equips you with the power and inspiration for total success. That is success at work and in life. And yes, it is getting steamy and racy on inspired success. This love month, the month of February, Valentine's month. And so mm -mm, on inspired success is about love, it's about sex, and it's about relationships. And I know you're really all very excited, and you should be. Because, you know, exploring this conversation of, of this subject about love, sex, and relationships is a dynamic panel of motivated men and women. And it is my great honor to welcome them to Inspired Success. you got to take notes, I'm telling you. Just get your notepad ready because, I mean, we're going to really, really dig into this conversation we're going to find out whether the sexual revolution of the 1960s has, fathers, has fathered us as a culture or set us back. We're going to explore the new paradigms and the new shift in the different kind of relationships that exist today. And we're going to talk about what is beneficial and what isn't quite so beneficial. How do you attract your life partner or soulmate? You know, how do you make your relationship work? And so we'll be talking more with this panel. And uh, first, I'd just like you to welcome them with me to Inspired Success. Um, I'd like to welcome Coach Lamont yes. Odoms. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. And I know I'm going to give you some time later to introduce yourself to viewers, but I want yes. to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be on Inspired Success. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And then here to my right, to my immediate left, actually, is <laughs> Eldon Lowry. And Eldon is a musician from New Haven, Connecticut. And um, I want to welcome you to Inspired Success, and thank you for being here. Sharon is one of my networking partners. This woman has been married for 43 years. I mean, I, I saw that little piece of um, information on Facebook, she had posted it there, and I'm like, oh my God, I need to get her on this show. <laughs> <laughs> she has wisdom to share with us because um, you know what the statistics are. Um, six out of 10 marriages end in divorce now in America. And um, so, you know, we want to know how, how you've been able to do it for so long, mm -hmm. you know? And so, welcome, Sharon Gothier. Gothier um, to Inspire Success. Thank you. And lastly but not least, she's no stranger to Inspired Success and to my events, to my some of my life events. Uh, many of you know um, life coach and motivational speaker Jacqueline um, Vossell, right? And so welcome, Jackie, Thank back you. to Inspired Success. Thank you. So, um, you know, really very exciting. And these are very everyday people, everyday men and women that, um, you know, are just going to share real life stories and experiences. Um, their information is at the bottom of the screen. So if you want to follow up with either one of them, you know where to contact them. Of course, you can always get a hold of them through my website, Royal 
proclamations.com. And so let's kind of dive, dive right into this conversation, okay? I mean, um, I want to start first with the sexual revolution of the 60s. That was where we really came out, so-called, and became liberated and um, really um, took our sexuality and expressing that more openly, you know. And um, I think as we have evolved, I don't know whether um, it has helped to advance us as a culture or whether it has set us back. Because what we find today now is that, um, you know, ma the marriage is no longer considered to be what um, makes um, a family or makes a relationship. People say it's just a piece of paper. So um, is it just a piece of paper and is there anything to be said with marriage? And I want to start with Sharon because Sharon is the, she's been married for the longest. And so is there anything to be said for marriage or is it a, just a piece of paper? Is there anything that you would say for marriage? I mean, if you stayed in it for that long, there must obviously be something. Well, I think it's more than a piece of paper. There's a reason why that there's a celebration when you get married. Um, and celebrations to me are very important. Yeah. So you celebrate that moment that you've committed to each other. And it's a commitment. So it's not about the paper. It's about the fact that you believe in committing to each other and you, um, and you honor that forever. Mm -hmm. And how I was when I was 18 is not how I am now. So we were fortunate enough to grow with each other. My husband was 24. I was 18. We didn't have kids right away. Um, I had quit high school actually and we got married. My husband had just finished college. Um, I don't know. We've always been able to talk. We made kind of a pact to each other and I had told you about this the other yeah. night when we were talking and that at that time we had several um, friends who were also married uh, or in relationships and they were always speaking poorly of each other. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, that really affected us. So we made a pact that we would never, ever, ever say anything bad about each other to anyone. Mm -hmm. And we've kept that. We've kept and that so all these as years. As far as the institution is concerned, what have you said is one of the greatest benefits it, um, to you that you've derived from that re marriage relationship that you think you may not have gotten if you went in a marriage relationship? Well, I don't think there's anyone in the world I trust more than my husband. So you found a trusting uh, partner. Correct. Someone that you can really, truly trust. And which is something that everyone craves for, you know. Right. We just crave for that one person yeah. in your life. And so, um, okay. And so what would you say, um, Lamont, well, well, in terms of for, for, for marriage, yes, is anything would, at all? I would definitely you congratulate and just celebrate what you have done, mm -hmm. you and your husband. It was different on my side because I had never seen a successful marriage. Yeah. Uh, my parents were divorced when I was probably about seven years old. So I think that the way that I entered into my marriage was that I was not going to do anything that I saw my father do. Mm -hmm. And since I saw no successful uh, marriages around me, and I had never seen any successful fathers either. So. <laughs> because uh, my father wasn't in my life. So from all those standpoints, it really developed me into the man that I became today because I wanted to do everything that you didn't opposite have a, of what I of saw. What, yeah, and what you did not get. Exactly. And I think at the beginning stages of my marriage, I had to learn how to treat my wife as a wife and a partner and no longer a girlfriend. There were liberties on that side of someone being um, a girlfriend, boyfriend commitment. Uh, which I know a lot of people who, are, a lot of young people who are watching this too, there are a lot of liberties because we don't understand the ideal of commitment when we're in a boyfriend girlfriend relationship because there's still some some type of freedom there. So let me just stop you there though. Yes. Um, you know, <laughs> my question right now is: Is the marriage institution antiquated? Is there anything to be said for it? Um, you know, that that's it. How long have you been married? I've been married for, let me get this right, 12 years. 12 years. So and one thing, is there anything you could say for it? Or for you, for you, do you think that it is antiquated, it's just a piece of paper, we don't really need to have um, a, a marriage ceremony or marriage relationship to be in a committed relationship? That's, that, that's what I just want you to I, I, I think to I, I think it's really based on that person's maturity of how they enter into that marriage. 
Um, I think a lot of people who are married tend to have the idea that if this does not work, then I have an out. And I think when you enter into a marriage with that type of um, understanding and ideal, what's then going to happen is that the first time that the feathers are ruffled, and it's going to happen, we're going to disagree with our spouses, that person then finds a reason to escape that marriage and then to move on. So I, th I think that today, um, we, we talk about marriage being defined in so many other different uh, avenues and, and aspects, but I think marriage does need to be defined on how we work out our situations with our spouses and okay, what we I don't do. I don't think you quite got where, where I was trying to go to. My question is: Is it antiquated? Is it old school? Is it old no. fashioned? Is it an institution that can be done away with that we don't need anymore? Is there any value in it? Is what I'm asking, Seriously. Eldin. What do you say? I, I would say, being in, on this <laughs> panel as a musician, yes. Okay, uh, the majority of my lifestyle is when people are out drinking, yes. enjoying the nightlife, yes. and actually running from that institution. Yes, mm. exactly. They are, they that, are, that, that, look, that, that's yeah. where I want they're, yeah. they're looking to see someone with a sparkle in their eye that their husband <laughs> or wife at home has lost. Yes. And loud music and alcohol is the perfect combination for <laughs> sacredness to just flutter away into thin air. Okay, so a lot of what I see yes. is that, uh, as, as you mentioned and earlier. so and so exactly and so you are t I highlighting the the current the culture you see because okay. most marriages are almost a dredge a drag and uh, they um, don't look unless happy. it's new unless it's new <laughs> exactly unless and so that is why more and more people are saying you know I don't want to be caught in that I, I want to be away it's old okay. it's not necessary anymore there's no value to it because look at what, it's like a life sentence, some form of institutionalization. <laughs> you know, who wants to be a part of that? I, and I so you're I, touching on something yeah, very important. Yeah. So that is why I'm saying, is there really something still to be said for it? Especially like you, a lot of the viewers, younger viewers, are growing up in homes with one parent and all of that. They didn't right. see anything positive being modeled. And so they're coming to, to this new generation and they're saying, hey, Hey, if that's what marriage is about, then it's not necessary. Is there any value to it? What do you say, Jackie? I think Are you are newly married. I am. Why did um, you opt to get married and not just live with your well, boyfriend? Because or your I, that's fiance? not my lifestyle. As a Christian, I completely believe that, first of all, the piece of paper you get when you're married, that's not for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's for the state's records. Mm -hmm. I could care less about that. <laughs> to me, marriage is a covenant, not a contract. And you don't break covenants. You break contracts. But too many people, their mindset is they go into this, like you said, with, well, I can get out of this. It's called divorce. But I don't believe in that. We don't use that word. In so my what marriage. is the value? Now, you're trying to, you see, I mean, people don't see the value of something. But, but not, we place you know, value in Kim Kardashian's marriage. <laughs> but, but so wait, that's wait, what no, people no, no. look at. Yeah. No, wait, 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 listen to this. This is a quote of mine that I, I coined. What we don't know, we don't value. What we don't value, we abuse or misuse mm -hmm. or not use, mm -hmm. okay? So until people begin to see the value, like he said, right. and they begin to see representation of that value, they're not going to use, uh, they will abuse the marriage institution. So for everyone, sit, uh, well, most of you sit at here, you've been married before. Is there any value in marriage? And what has been the value you have derived? And you've touched mm -hmm. on it. Sharon, and you said with the trust <clears throat> yeah. that one of the values of, of what you have found in marriage is finding someone that you uh, can trust over the years and you've come to really love and trust. And everybody values that. Everybody craves that. In, uh, in, you know, it's in a marriage, human craving. Yeah. That's, to me, that's what marriage is. Yes. It's a word that's used that says to everyone that you've celebrated that day with that you've made a commitment to each other. And you know what? There are lots of bumps in the road. And the best way to anchor yourself is to have someone that you can go through it with. Yes. And it doesn't mean that you're going to always like them. And it doesn't mean that you know they're always going to like you. I think the fact that we never talk poorly about each other to anyone is huge. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they used to joke with me about it at work because they'd talk about their spouses and I would always say, well, my husband's perfect. Uh, and of course he isn't. 
But why would I ever tell them what was wrong with him? It, it doesn't, right. the more you do that, the more you convince yourself mm -hmm. that there are issues with it. That's so right. you just work that out. To me, that's the institute of marriage. You know, it's something that has been said in, in our culture that says to everyone, I've made a commitment to this person. And what I've gotten out of it is a trust that I would never get in anything else. Okay, and so, okay, very good, well said. Mm -hmm. Now, what I would then say, or what someone else would say, is that, um, do, do I need that covenant? Do I need that piece of paper to actually make that lifelong commitment? Because that's what it has been for you. Yes, there are bumps, and when the bumps and you hit the roadblocks and the bumps, you didn't, you know, you didn't go out, you didn't run out, you didn't quit. You stayed the course and all of that. And someone, someone else could say, you know, I don't really need to formalize that relationship in that sense for me to have a lifelong happy relationship and I'm sure the viewers watching and thinking to themselves I've been with my partner 23 years for example and we don't we're not married and um, we have an okay relationship and we trust each other okay. and so what do you say about those kind of yeah I agree with Jackie a lot of it has to do with how you were raised mm -hmm. if you if you were raised seeing mama go through six and seven boyfriends since you've been in high school, then you don't really grow up seeing the value of connecting with one person, mm -hmm. locking into them and developing mm -hmm. and cultivating. But if, you, if, you're, if you've seen it and you appreciate it as a kid, it does leave an impression as an adult. And the, and the converse is also true. Yes, yes. Well, I, yeah, I, I mean, I grew up without my father. Uh, they ended up getting a divorce, and, you know, so I saw a strong, independent woman who raised my brother and I. And so I actually had a hard time before I was married. I had a hard time understanding, let the man be the man and you be the woman. Yeah. Because I was the man. I locked the doors when I was little. I was bigger than my mom. Still am, obviously. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. So my struggle was understanding, well, I'm, I'm by myself. I got this. Why do I yeah, need a man? Yeah, exactly. You know, okay. but I also realized that, well, I am a woman. Yeah. And I learned to not be so, this is my past. I'm going to live that way forever. Unfortunately, so many of us live in our past and we never get to that point where we say, you know what, I don't care what my past is, it's not gonna be my present. That's so right. many of us That's allow right. our past to determine our future and at some point we have to say, that's not what I want for myself. So That's I know right. what we That's see right. on TV, I know a lot of us come from broken homes, but at some point you have to decide, what do I want for my life? Exactly. Exactly. And then also moving from there, you, you, you also then begin to ask yourself, how can I achieve what I want? Mm -hmm. Because so many of us start out with yeah. good intentions. So mm -hmm. many of us, you know, start out with good intentions. As bad as the divorce rates are in America, do you know that 98% of single men and women want to be married? Wow. And that the, one of the fastest growing segments and industries yeah. is the relationship matchmaking <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Much making, what, yeah. What do you suppose is the cause of that? Uh, yeah. So I, I think that there is an innate hunger. I think yeah, it's just that something is, that is within us mm -hmm. that is, 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 is innate, that is God-given, where there's this need for connection, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. connection with another human being in close association, like you said, in close interaction, close pro proximity to and an, 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 uh, co in a commitment that is ongoing, you know? And um, even though uh, many people, um, you know, at the same time explore and they have different kind of relationship, friends with benefits, where there's no kind of commitment, they wake up the next morning, many of them admit that they feel empty, they feel degraded, both men and women, when it's not in that kind of um, commitment of, of a relationship, marriage relationship. They, they find that, you know, when that person goes in and out of their lives and there's no commitment, they feel whole, a hole mm -hmm. in their heart. They feel like a part of them is stripped away. So that, I think that there's that innate desire for us to connect at whatever point. I have, um, you know, older women in my network who are in their 60s still, who are single and still think, believing and wanting a, 
I'm thinking, <laughs> shouldn't you be done by now? <laughs> it happens. It happens. You know, so now I want you to speak to that. Why do you think, what then would you say, you know, is, can make it work? And let, let's, let's start with Sharon. What, what, what makes it work? As far as relationships are concerned, you know, when my kids would come home as teenagers and say they were in love, I would say that it was lust. So mm. I think that initially uh, is what attracts you to each other is that lust. And that mm. doesn't last long. So either you're going to create a relationship between you that's beyond that mm. or you're not. So for people mm. who are attracted to each other, uh, based on lust, which normally happens uh, with everybody at the beginning. Once that's gone, if they don't have anything in common that they built on from the beginning, then I think it just falls apart. And the other is respect for each other. You know, I quit high school. I ended up going back and getting my GED. I had aspirations to go to college, which I did. My husband always supported that. You know, um, so I always said that he had his life, I had my life, and we have our life. When our kids were little, we used to have Wednesday nights, we would tell our kids that mommy and daddy had a meeting in the bathroom, and they believed that. <laughs> so what we did is we made it a special night for them, and they had their little dinner, and they went to bed early, and my husband and I we joke about how we planned our life in the bathtub. We had this big old house with a huge bathtub, and we would sit there in the bathtub, and we would talk. You know, 99% of the time, we would just talk. Uh, and it was so cute, because I can tell you that uh, a couple of times my kids, you know, inadvertently would say to people, well, it's Wednesday night, and my mom and dad have a meeting in the bathroom. <laughs> um, but we always took So you have touched on a couple of things here, and I, I want us to kind of, I want to stop you there, and I want of everyone else to kind of um, contribute on that. You said number one, the, so you're saying there's a difference between lust mm -hmm. and love, mm -hmm. really, you know, and I think that's one important thing that uh, viewers really need to get, you know, because we live in a very sexualized culture, a very romanticized culture, and so our concept of love and philosophy of love, and we use the word so casually, I love mm -hmm. you, I love you, I love you, and so we have really lost what the true meaning is. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, it's more than that initial, oh gosh, uh, physical attraction, you know. Yeah. So you said, uh, you touched on a couple of things, to attract the right love person in your life and to maintain and retain that relationship for the long haul. You said you must have things in common. Mm -hmm. And so that speaks to me about your values. Mm -hmm. So um, really identifying before you even start a relationship what your values are. Mm -hmm. What are the things that you totally treasure and mean so much to you? If faith is important to you, for example, you know, and, and in going to church, if integrity is important to you, is charity a value of yours? Is family a value? Raising kids, you know, all those your values you must first and foremost define. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that when you then come into re meet somebody beyond the physical attraction, you want to see whether they share the exactly. same values. Right. Because if you don't share the same values, I guess at some point you're going to keep quit and there's going to be a conflict right. because you would That's not right. agree on that. So what, what do you yeah. say with that to oh, that, Elder? You know what comes, yeah. comes in the way of, of really being able to pull out your values and then compare your values to the next person that you meet. Yeah. You know, you know what gets in the way of that? What? Attraction. If you want somebody so bad, they yeah. look so good, <laughs> you're not going to say the things that upset them. You're not yeah. going to say the things that might make them squirm a little bit in their seat. You're going to you're going to try to say everything you can. To get and that's you know, called dating. Yes. yes. You know what's funny about that is that, I I when in my in my, you know, process of coaching a lot of women, especially in relationships, one of the first questions that I always ask a woman, uh, especially if she's single, is if a man asks you what he's looking for, do you answer the question? And what you're looking for, do you answer the question? Because a lot of men would ask a woman, well, what are you looking for in a man? And women tend to answer that question because they know exactly, in many cases, what they're looking for. And I tell them to stop. Don't answer the question. Because men have ears. Yes. And the moment that we hear that, 
and is they're the gonna play that to we that. become exactly. what she's looking for. Exactly. So, so bottom yeah. line is, if she says, well, I want a man that's going to rub my back on Tuesdays <laughs> at 7 o'clock. I want a man that's going to bring me flowers on Thursdays. That man is going to become that. And at the same time, that man will get lost in that. And yes. it becomes a false identity until he slips up one day. And Tuesday and then, comes. And then it's too late. And, because by that late. time, you've fallen for that man. Exactly. And so, and, and so I think they have to do, though, with the whole thing. Yeah, I love you. Let's get married. And then all of a sudden, when that dies, oh, no, we got to work through this. That's why the divorce exactly. rate is so high. Because right. people build it on that. They what build you it said, on that. They build exactly. it on that. You don't and when know that's what gone, they think love is not there. Right. But exactly. if you look up the word love, look, if it's an adjective and noun, you'll, you'll see a verb. It's an action word. It is. Yes. It's so an love is action. action. And I, I think it also um, be, um, um, is due, you know, to the fact that many people, too, haven't really connected with their authentic self. That, that's true. That's true. Many people yeah, haven't absolutely. really discovered themselves. Exactly. Yeah. They don't really know who they are themselves. Exactly. They're lost. They're still mm -hmm. trying to figure it out. They don't know what their values are. And even though that, um, you know, so I would say for the singles out there, you know, while you're waiting, don't be so much in a hurry. And you know, sometimes we, we're so afraid of being alone. And if you're mm -hmm. afraid of being alone, you have issues, actually. That mm -hmm. even is the way you really need to stay alone for a while. Mm -hmm. We kind of right. jump from relationship to relationship because we're afraid of our singleness. Mm -hmm. We're afraid of ourselves. Of, uh, we don't like being our own company. We feel kind of insecure. Mm -hmm. And so we jump from relationship to relationship. We just come back on the rebound, and we haven't figured who we are. And then we go into this relationship with somebody else who's still also trying to figure out, and then you f both kind of wake up one day and discover, hmm, not quite. So I would say to singles, to the young people, you know, um, you know, I was on a show once, and they were asking me what is the ideal re age to start relationship. And I, at that time, I said 18. But when I left the show, um, my, my, my intuition was, my spirit said to me, really? Bola that low? And I said, yeah, I made a mistake because I tell my daughters, wait till you get out of college, you know, because you're still trying to form who you are. You're still trying to discover you, who you are, yourself. You're still trying to build some sense of worth and achieve certain goals and dreams in life so that before you go in, you were one of the lucky ones, uh, Sharon, doing it at 18, so young. We're both so young and it has lasted for so long. So um, what, what, what would you say about really people finding who they are first and um, using the season of their singleness to do that and, and really create that, um, you know, um, a connection with who they are and, and define their values before they go into, into relationship? Mm -hmm. Well, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I likened, I've likened relationships to a job interview uh, and sometimes drug abuse or substance abuse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At the job interview, the whole idea of those two people meeting together is to find out if what I have to offer is going to work with your company. And what your company can do for me, is it going to really satisfy my, my expenses? Yes. So the conversation is usually styled, it should be stylized by <laughs> two individuals that are solid. Mm -hmm. But this is where, where, where I, I tend to think of substance abuse. You're talking codependency, mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. it's on a substance or a person. Yes. Whatever that is, it completes that person, or they have in their mind, oh, I'm not complete without this person. Mm -hmm. So if it fails, now they're back to being incomplete. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then instead of detox, yeah. yes. in between relationships, <laughs> usually the next relationship gets them through the tough times of the current. Yeah, which means there is still a codependency. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, and I, I write songs about this. That's why I'm able to like, oh yeah, I know which lyric. But yeah, it's the codependency right. yep. of people that cause people to say, you know what? I don't really have to immerse myself in thought about who I am right. because I got this person here right next to me. Yeah, and so it's like relationships becomes a distraction. Yes, and not something that builds the family. Yes, exactly, and and then also you know. We then, we lose what, how we then define relationship, you know, and, and I want us to now touch on that, you know, how we define relationship and how society has defined relationship to us, you know, and um, whether that has, is serving us 
or whether that is really diminishing us. And, you know, relationship now is um, very sexualized, like we said, like mm -hmm. I said earlier, um, you know, it's all about the physical, very physical and all of that. And you are touched about the different kinds of relationship and the tryon relationship. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't know how you put triune. it. Triune. Triune, yeah, yeah, exactly, triune. And so um, I want us to touch on that because when you, the younger generation especially think relationship, they just think boyfriend, girlfriend, get behind a car, kiss, yeah. kiss, and mm -hmm. do all of that. Yeah. And um, that's what it's about. But is it really just that? What is it about? Is it deeper than that? Um, have we, you know, you know, yeah. uh, we've moved away from what it truly, truly means in terms of two people coming together in a, um, in a covenant relationship, in a commitment. And what are the, some of the dangers of being in just, you know, defining relationship? Just casual. Casual, exactly. exactly. Uh, every relationship is defined in, in two aspects, and that two aspects is there's vertical and then there's horizontal. Mm -hmm. I have to make sure that my vertical is right, especially with my walk with, with, with God and my walk in who I know who I am mm -hmm. before I can walk that horizontal line with the person that is my partner in life. Mm -hmm. uh, there are three aspects to who we are as individuals. We're spirit, we're soul, and we're body. Mm -hmm. So in, in that point alone, whomever I find, to be that that person that I walk that journey with for the rest of my life has to line up with each one of those dimensions, mm -hmm. meaning that the foundation of the spirit is belief. I have to believe that this person is right for me and I'm right for them. And I have to believe that I can help this person fulfill their purpose and they can help me fulfill mine. And the soul part, which is the trickiest part, there are the five dimensions of the soul. There's the mind, will, emotions, intellect, thought life. So when I become one with that particular person, their ideals enter into my ideals and we become one ideal. So my understanding is joined with her. I'm not, you're not my wife. That's, I'm, not, I'm not the one that's married to her for 40 something years. She's just convenient. <laughs> but you're just right next to me. But See, what happens- Don't kill him when know, he gets old. But what happens is, is that your soul and my soul become one. That's where we have the understanding today of soul ties. Yeah. So then what happens is, is that that's why you can think something and I can finish it for you. Oh, and yeah, I know you're going to touch on it in a minute. <laughs> Especially for young men and young women in that's a right. casual relationship. There you go. Let's talk about that. Is our soul on the inside or the outside? On the inside, inside. right? Yep. So I won't get too graphic, but ladies, when a man enters into you, that's he's right. entering into your what? Your soul. Oh, that's okay, right. that's why that's we right. call it a soul tie. So a soul tie becomes chains yeah, exactly. that hold you together with someone. So when you got all crazy about that guy you had a you know <laughs> a casual relationship with and you're trying to act like it's just casual, guess what? Because your soul is tied to that person, you cannot control those emotions. That's why you start getting crazy. So I don't believe in casual relationships. That's right. Because I don't believe you can build on them. That's so right. And, that's and, that's and, the and, and what I hear you say is that relationships therefore is a partnership there mm. is it's a greater level to just mm. anyone just being casual yeah it's a because partnership because just like it's an agreement of two people right. coming together saying you know um I, I, you know putting the using business terms we are gonna come together to complement and further each other because That's right when we synergize we're stronger together than alone and mm. so it's a partnership relation, it's an agreement and um, a commitment that we are going to stay with each other to help both of us further our courses, much better than we could do if we were alone. Right. And so the concept of relationship just being, oh, a fling, a one-night thing, and being so casual it's never a is not ex does not exist. It's never a one-night yeah. thing. And so now... Um, if you then look at how now people do that these days and how our culture is trying to, um, you know, um, define relationship like that and make it very sensual, very um, physical, mm -hmm. very casual, that you can, you know, Jersey Shore and all those kind of <laughs> things that uh, yeah. promote yeah. the sense of, glorify. you know, yeah. glorify it and make also a, a, a man feel that I'm a man when mm -hmm. I've conquered 10 women tonight and all that. So I want us to talk on that. 
now we're coming to sex, you know. So mm. what what is that? And um, is it really that men um, feel their sense of ego and accomplishment mm -hmm. is according to how many women they have conquered and they have slept with and all of that? So, um, you know, yeah. if, if you don't mind, yes. that that is truly where I had an understanding before. Okay. Uh, because when I did see my father, I saw somebody else with him. Yes. And it was not the person that was there the weekend before. Mm. Yes. So there, there is this thing in some men, some men, not all men, but some men that suggest that uh, if I have this woman and that woman, then you know I'm doing something, especially in the crowd and the conversation with other men. Yes. And I, I think too, uh, when with men who don't have anything within. Yes. We try to fill that void with an inward harem. Yes. So then what happens is, is that I always have something that I can revert back to inwardly because I've been with this woman and I've been mm. with that woman and I've been with this woman and that woman. And so many men have lost who they are in, in that process. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I believe too that before we enter into a marriage, we have to really get to a position with ourselves that we disconnect ourselves from those old soul ties. Mm -hmm. Because then what happens is that you're going to bring in that relationship that you had with Larry, Sherry, and Harry. Mm -hmm. You're going to bring all those relationships into your bedroom, and then you will begin to reenact what you've learned before. Yeah, yeah I want to stop you there. You did quite, <laughs> um, um, you know, in terms of, you're watching Inspired Success, by the way, if you just tuned in. And I know it, it, it sounds really racy and steamy here. You probably heard words like sex and relationships. Yes, so that's what we're talking about. It's February, and we're exploring that subject of love, sex, and relationships. And, um, you know, just keep tuned in, taking notes. Mm -hmm. So now, why do you think men define their manness or their manhood by um, the sense of conquering a woman? Where did that come from? And so many girls, too, find that they compromise. Mm -hmm. They are not really, and the younger girls, too, and, 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 and um, you know, they compromise their what integrity and their, uh, their values and their worth um, because they think that is the expectation. That is the expectation. And so they stay in not, not positive relationships. They start relationship early because they have also come to believe that they have to be with a guy to, um, to help them define who they are. It's part of their being, you know, feminine and being womanly. So we, does the relationship really help to define us and, and um, you know, or do we have to really first define ourselves? I think that stems for women. I cannot speak for men, so yeah. get there in a second. But for women, I think there's a couple things. Um, if you have an absent father or a mm -hmm. father who was not a good man, you saw bad things, you actually don't have a standard, or if you do have a standard, you have a very low standard, okay? Mm -hmm. So therefore, when you date, you never have a standard for how a man should treat you. Second thing is, if you have insecurities, which 100% of women do until they work through them, you're also mm -hmm. going to allow a man that you're dating to do certain things that you know is not right, and I see women making excuses for that man, and so what women do is they put their value and their self-worth in someone else's hands because they never hold it themselves. That's right. They don't know what they're worth, and like I say, if you don't know what you're worth, someone else won't, so someone will treat you the way you allow them mm -hmm. to treat you, and I think that's what's happening. I think young women see what's on TV and magazines, and they say, well, that's how I'm going to get the man. And that's not, that's not the case because yes. it's not working for that's you, That's not it? how I'm going to get exactly right. get them. I don't have to be thin. I don't have to be right. blonde. And right. I don't have. And yeah. so I want you to Let talk from the men. That. Yeah. Because um, insecurities exist in all people. Mm. That's yes. Right. Mm -hmm. that's but right. they express their insecurities in different ways. Mm. A guy could care less if he looks fat in his suit. But you're, honey, do I look fat in this dress? You see the difference? Mm -hmm. yeah. A guy could care less. And what you so, always say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I what know. you always say. <laughs> no. And you look beautiful. No. <laughs> but a, a man's insecurities are often expressed outwardly yeah. Yeah. Come on. by con That's right. con That's connecting right. with That's all right. these women. Mm -hmm. I am the man. That's right. I don't feel like the man. I'm flat yeah. broke, and I have no... <laughs> 
I have not a pot to piss in, but you know what? Because all these women want me, I'm all right. Yes. I'm in there. I'm in the game. That's what y'all have. But, but, a, but, a, but, a, but a woman, her insecurities could, like, like Jackie said, it could lie in how pretty mm -hmm. she feels or how this man makes her feel, how, how special he makes her Women feel. Women will take that moment over the three days he didn't call but, her. But a man, <laughs> but really, how do you then respect, I don't know, we were coming to that, the second most valuable principle for successful relationship that you touched on earlier, Sharon. Yeah. Um, you know, knowing who you are and then um, having things in common. We've touched on that, you know, knowing your values and making sure that um, your partner shares the same value. Then you also talked about respect. Mm -hmm. And one of the parts that you made not to disrespect mm -hmm. yourselves, uh, you know, publicly, you know, um, behind one uh, each other's back. Well, I, I mean, think the family unit is important. Yeah. I mean, we always had dinner at our house. Because at dinner time, we had an open door for anyone. I would call them my orphans. And everybody would come in and talk. And the kids would talk like you weren't there. So you'd find out what had happened. You'd know who <laughs> Susie is. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that marriage is not going to go away. Right now in our society, that's the epitome of concreting your relationship. Mm -hmm. We've accommodated that somewhat through the years because other relationships have evolved. So I have a homosexual uh, uh, friends that live in Florida, and they're married, uh, and they have a bonding relationship. So I think what our society has done is not necessarily negate marriage, but we've accommodated marriage uh, it, with other relationships that kind of evolved. And yeah. I don't think that's ever going to go away. And Yeah, and I hope the statistics improve. Um, but I wanted to touch on the fact that you know, we come into respect. So a man is really um, trying to feed his ego because somehow his um, manness is being defined to him or has been defined to him by society or wherever I got that from, from the um, external relationships or the number of women he's at. But deep down, deep down, let me get into, your, into the soul of men now. Do you really value and respect when a woman uh, respect women who give themselves to you very quickly mm -hmm. and easily. No. You when you ask a yes or no question, then you're going to get a yes or no answer. <laughs> but if you want a discussion um, about it, it's the reason why, the reason why it's really the core of the discussion. Um, you you mentioned ego. Ego has this negative tone to it, as though to say only men have an ego. Yeah. But really what it's about is insecurities. And yes. what it does is fill in, putty fills in the holes of the mm -hmm. insecurity of yeah. the incomplete man. So, yeah, I, I, yes, I, I know, like but... The incomplete man. Yes, because but... I, I, I'm sorry. Every, yeah. I believe every man wants to be needed. They want to be wanted. Okay. And I think that that want and that need to be needed and wanted is something that is so empty within us that we just want to offer you whatever we can. Well, I think everyone wants to be needed. Yeah, yes, we were so, talking but, about but men. Tell me, <laughs> but but, but tell it's expressed me. in different ways, though. Right. Right. That's right. That's the difference That's right. between but men and women. But tell me the greatest mistakes that women make, then. Okay, so, you know, I'm, I'm, what are the greatest mistakes that women make in relationship? Well, they make to me. I want to hear that because, you know, I've been trying to get you to touch on that because, okay, now, um, you, you have that need and you, you have all these women. You are the celebrity man of the town <laughs> and you have all these women. Thank you. You're a which is, which is a rare, <laughs> which, is, which is a rare population, really. <laughs> men are not the men. They might talk that they are. I know, but, they but are let not us the even men. assume they are the men. Right. Okay. And um, so that, you know, you have the opportunity of having one, two, three. A four, uh, because I see it a lot in the African American culture. I meet a man who has about three or four women who are his baby mothers. Uh, what do they call them? Baby mother? You know? <laughs> I don't know. What do they call them? <laughs> so, and I say to myself, <laughs> these women, uh, you know, what's their problem? You have seen a man who has three kids by three different women, and you agree to be number four and be yet another, you know. So, but what's happening? Because it looks like the men. Have it, it's easier for a woman for them to get a woman, mm -hmm. 
so it appears. But what I want to say to you, what I want to say to you is that what are the mistakes that women are making that they are not able to attract the right kind of man into their life, the right kind of relationship, and be in that committed relationship? It's not well, their fault. They're well, giving, it's, it's not, yeah. the women are yeah. giving boyfriends, husband privileges. No, you, right. no, no, let the men talk about it. No, well, Jackie, he pointed to me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, you know, I, that's, that's I actually, because exactly. I, want exactly. The men, I want the men to really tell them, okay? Because probably there's a woman, I, 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 I coach a lot of women. And like I told you, you know, I have a large network of women. And um, I know many of them that are single who want a man in their life. And I know many of them that have been in multiple relationships that can't seem to keep a man. And so what is the problem? What is the problem? What are they doing wrong? Time reaches a point to settlement. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that when they've been single for so long in many cases, they'll mm -hmm. settle for whatever comes and whatever shows them some type of interest. I'm not saying all women, but I'm saying um, you know, women that, that, that are, have been looking for, for a man to, to come into partnership with them. They may not be all that they're looking for, but he's showing interest they to me settle. now, so, so I'm willing to settle. Okay, I'm going to put the words desperate. in your mouth. Well, I don't so want to say stop desperate. Stop being desperate, okay? <laughs> if you appear too desperate and you want to settle and you don't set a standard, you don't make yourself hard to get, you, you, have, you, have, you don't express your values, and you just settle then you're going to lose him eventually. So that's, uh, that's what and, I hear you, know, you say. And, and something you else, know, too. Value yourself and know that, you know what, I'm worth it. You, you, you don't milk the cow for free. That's okay? right. <laughs> you know, if, if a woman does not know what her value is, um, any man that comes mm -hmm. will put a price on it. Exactly. Yes. And, and then she will accept that price, and then she would expect the next man to, to give her that same price and that same value. That's why um, you know you can have you know you can have an Ishmael before an Isaac comes. You can have something that's really truly not for you, and will will devalue you. But then when something good comes along that that comes to bring up your value, you reject it because you think it's suspicious. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now can, can yeah. I touch on that? Yeah. As far as the, the the male perspective, the mistake is not having the standard set, as you right. mentioned. But the core of the mistake goes one generation back. Mm -hmm. If your father, you run to your father, and he always telling you how beautiful you are. He's telling you how funny and special you are, how smart you are. Some loser on the street that has children by all these other women is not going to appeal to you. If there's nobody right. that fortifies you and strengthens you as a little girl, right. mm -hmm. the first time someone makes you feel special, Every, everything comes up. Yes. And as a father Absolutely. to daughters, one thing that I do is that I take my daughters out on dates. Yep. And I sit there with them and I show them the way that they should be treated because when they are sitting there with whomever, they're going to be reminded, does he treat me the way my father treats me? Okay, yeah, well... Absolutely. God bless your kids. But, but a lot of women God don't have that. God bless your kids. A lot of my viewers don't have that. But well, now, okay. I can pass so, that. There okay. you go. <laughs> and, that, and so, but listen now, I want to really bring out the point that I think I hear you. So now, don't be desperate and also don't be cheap, okay? Mm -hmm. And so just because the guy, you know, you think the norm is that first date, you know, we can kiss, we can get into bed and all of that, you really bringing out your down your value, and so he eventually is gonna take you for free for cheap, and people don't value cheap things. After a while, they get tired. So that's one one thing. Is that is that kind of correct? What what I hear you say? Um, I mean, is is is. Or do you have an expectation? I mean, you know, the first night or the first time you meet someone, you go on a date that you it needs to get very intimate and physical. I think that has several dimensions mm -hmm. because you might say, well, the man is about town. He's got all these women. Let me tell you what, if he don't take her to the moon, he ain't coming back. That's her decision. She's like, I'm bored with this dude and he's a loser. So yes. a lot of it has to do with the dynamic of on contact. If she feels in her soul that there might be a potential of passion yes. because the roll over and sleep after two minutes, oh no, you gotta get your, get out, yeah. get out. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know that side of it too. Yeah. So all women don't devalue themselves just because there is contact. It, a lot of it comes with the true genuineness of representing yourself honestly when you're dating. Because mm -hmm. it's so, dating is this very flutter of pretense. Okay. Well, you, you mentioned value. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like to think of it as this. If you're a woman and you're a whole human being, you're 100%, right? And you give 10% to this guy who runs away because he doesn't call you. Then you give your body another 20% to another guy and he runs away. He doesn't want to call you anymore because he went to the next one. And then you keep on doing that. That's what it feels like. Now, if you're a young woman and you're listening, you're still 100%. That's Nobody right. can take anything from you. But when you allow people to come into your soul and into your spirit, let them have that peace. And then they run away. That's what you feel. Mm -hmm. So women, Ooh. yeah, women do feel devalued. But I have to say, you're allowing that to happen. And that stems back to, well, I never knew how to be treated because my father wasn't around. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you have to start taking responsibility for your own life and say, do I want to keep doing that to myself? That's right. Do I want to keep good. letting people run away with, with my emotion, Pieces with my feelings? Do I want to yeah. keep giving people that? Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself that. And so uh, as, we, as we begin to you know, we're going to wrap up this conversation, then let's come to the question of sex. And, and um, you know, because you really touched on that. And, you know, you're talking about sometimes the, the, the passion and, you know, even women want the passion. And I know younger people, you know, they come teenagers, they're hormonal things going on anyway that are, <laughs> that are kind of natural and the, the, the desires come there, uh, begin to come strong for physical intimacy. Um, but... You know, what I hear you say, you know, and there's a whole debate about whether abstinence is something that we should encourage, something that's attainable, something that's, um, and that sex is only for a marriage um, relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and so I want you to talk on that because I, I've heard that somewhere. And so if you're take, giving, so sex is like when you're intimate with somebody, it goes in and it's a, a soul tie and certain parts of you are, are chipped away. Mm -hmm. And um, so, but, you know, um, people don't understand that piece. And um, so I want us to touch on that. What was your understanding of the whole marriage thing? And then I had a um, uh, the whole sex thing and abstinence. And while you're single, not just, you know, it's for a committed relationship. And um, I had that conversation with someone recently who said that most religions make sex so um, boring and um, so like only for procreation where there's a natural and biological benefit to be attained from the exercise and that why should it be delayed you know so I want us to touch quickly we only have about five minutes you've been watching inspired success I know that um, <laughs> you have been inspired and um, enjoying this conversation and you know that you can continue the conversation with us on Facebook, Inspire Success is on Facebook. You know, post your comments and just share your own feedback um, on this wonderful conversation that, that we're having today. Um, so what do you say about that in closing? Just one minute each. I want each one of you to say that because I want to also share the fourth annual Total Woman Conference on Saturday, March 31st, March 31st at the Simsbury Inn with... Um, with viewers, uh, it's a really, 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 really great Valentine's Day gift. So give the gift of care to someone that you love or to yourself. And you can learn more at TotalWomanConference.com. But, um, you know, we're closing in about three minutes. And I want you to just touch on that. What, what do you say? What do you say? Is sex for a marriage relationship only um, um, abstinence to be encouraged? Is it attainable? Is it possible? Plus or minuses, quickly. <laughs> I was in a failed marriage, and I was a virgin before wow. I, I got married. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that I was a virgin before I was married, but I'm not proud of the fact that we were sexually incompatible. So what to encourage is, is really knowledge about what you want. Is that really sexual incompatibility? I don't think so. I think that the incompatibility must have been that 
you probably weren't physically attracted in the first place from the beginning. Oh, Maybe we the, were. You were. We were so, attracted to each other, but we never slept with one another until yes. we were married. And so what is sexual incompatibility in a marriage set up? Uh, if you've never had sex before, you don't know if you like it. Believe it or not, there are some people who really are disinterested. So you don't know that until you experience it. Was she a virgin as well? Yes. And, and I think that, it is, that was even more so the fact of um, um, there are other issues that might make you not l like it that might not be even just related that to the fact that you were incompatible. But anyway, so what are you saying in one minute? That we, you we would can't say touch that on that in one minute. That's a whole, <laughs> really, a failed marriage, really? <laughs> no, no, in you terms go. of sex. <laughs> you know, go to why, the next why one. Were you, why were you um, a virgin? Was that was my religious really background. Just, okay, yeah. that was based on um, your beliefs. Okay, my, good. My uh, so and quickly, I, yes. Uh -huh, well, Abstinence yeah. is possible. You can do it. My husband and I waited. And we have built our marriage on a rock and not sand. And I mean, mm. we are compatible because we choose to be. I feel like um, I enjoy pleasing him. He enjoys pleasing me because of we know how it strengthens our marriage. So you, it's possible. Absolutely. What do you say? I know that you were younger and it was a different time. But just in one minute, what do well, you say? I think that if you look at sex a little bit differently and that it's just not an act, it's mm -hmm. part of your building your relationship and trust. Yes. That to me, more than the sex itself, it's just, um, it's just a, again, a commitment to each other at that moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so and it should be within a committed marriage relationship. So what say you? And I'll say this really quick. Yeah. Sex is for marriage, abstinence is possible. Yes. Simple as that. Okay, and so that's where we end it today. Not that we run out of words, but we definitely <laughs> yeah. run out of time. I hope you've totally enjoyed um, this um, episode of Inspired Success. I've been really inspired myself and really very diverse, very energetic um, panel of discussants. I really appreciate you being here, Lamont, Sharon, Jacqueline, and Eldon. And I appreciate also you for tuning in to Inspired Success. And um, don't forget that we're on Facebook, we're Twitter, and we're on LinkedIn, and that you can also catch up with us on my website, royalproclamations.com. Check out the Total Woman Conference on totalwomanconference.com to give the gift of care and love to yourself or someone you love. And um, this is Princess Bola Adelani, the Total Success Coach, reminding you to keep smiling. Hey, put a smile on your face. Life's too short. Keep learning. Keep believing. Keep networking. Keep on keeping on. You're on the winning side. I'll see you next month where we're going to be looking more extensively at the upcoming Total Woman Conference. Thank you and God bless.